Hello everyone, it's Peace Helper here and today's video is about 11 things you should know before playing games Borderlands 3. So this article is by PC Gamer, so all credit of this video goes to PC Gamer. But this video is for your convenience so you don't have to go through this article and read all the 11 points. So let's get started. So the first one is, you can fast travel to your vehicle. Borderlands 3 is fairly general with fast travel allowing players to teleport to designated nodes in each area from anywhere at any time. But you can also fast travel to your vehicle from anywhere, something that's easy to miss in the tutorials. With this in mind, once you reach the end of a shooting corridor as part of a side mission and want to keep exploring the zone, don't rush back, fast travel. Just click and hold on your vehicle's location on the map and you will pop over instantly. So this is the first thing that you should know before playing the game. Now let's come to the second one. You've got mail. Sometimes after a completing quest or just out of nowhere, you'll get a notification that you've received the mail. Thing is your inbox isn't located in a sensible place. You'll need to press escape and head to the social menu to read email. And you should because you'll get tons of guns and cosmetics that way. So now let's head to the third point. It is prioritize backup as due purchases. Borland's best feature, the loot can also be its most frustrating one. There's an abundance of cool guns and gear that it's easy for the backpack to fill up fast. Cut down on trips to vendors to sell off extra items by prioritizing backpack as due purchases on your century ship. Backspace and lost loot space are good secondary options if you're having an extra hard time letting go. So this was the third point that is prioritized backup as due purchases. Now let's come to the fourth point. Purchase the first tier ammo space as dues too. I ran out of ammo every few minutes in the first hours of Borderlands 3 and would you believe me if I said it sucked? Luckily it's not a huge problem when you scale up and upgrade the first tier or two of ammo reserves at Marcus shop on Century. So all you have to do is purchase the first tier ammo space as dues. So this was the fourth point. Now let's come to the fifth point. Side quest will match your level when you finish the campaign. Don't feel the need to clean up every side quest before you leave a zone. Save them for long enough and they'll match your level once you finish the campaign and will continue to level up with you. So this was just a general one. Now let's head to the sixth one. Use the ping system. And it's context sensitive. Press X while looking at enemy and it'll outline them in red for the whole team. Point at a gun and it'll highlight the sucker in blue. Point at a friendly and it'll highlight them in green. It's especially helpful when things get hectic and your team needs to get rid of a particularly tough enemy. Pin the jug. Dwelling is back. This is the seven point. Press the emote button, Z by default. You can change it to any other button if you want. To propose a dwell, it's a cute feature for settling bets or screwing around. But I'll just, uh, but I'll just use it to shame my friends until they catch up to my level. So this is also a feature that you should know. Now let's come to the eighth one. Equipping gun ornaments and skins is more difficult than it should be. I don't recall seeing a tutorial when I received my first gun skin. Same case goes for my first ornament. Turns out you keep each cost cosmetic in a completely different place. For ornaments, just look at the empty nodule to the left of your equipped weapons in the inventory screen. Click it and equip some little doodads. For weapon skins, highlight a weapon and press E to inspect it. From there you can press X to equip weapon skin. Convoluted, you know. Now let's head to this step, don't get too attached to specific guns or gear. This is a really important one. So I know how it goes. A few hours pass and no new guns, shields or grenades you find click. They do the job, just not with sufficiently ridiculous panic. These weak draws are a bit too common during the bulk of the first playthrough. But eventually a gun drops that you feel like you'll never let go. It happened to me with a legendary pistol that worked like a rapid fire shotgun. But I loved it last. I leveled up and it didn't. We'll have to let go of the good stuff eventually because it won't suffice against higher level enemies. Don't sweat it, something good will come along. You can do this. Now let's come to the next one that is the Iridium will flow. Be patient. I'll sell cool cosmetics on Century Bottom deck but only takes Iridium which is tough to come by in the early hours of Borderlands 3 but don't sweat it. You'll be swimming in the stuff after a specific juncture in the story that opens up a few avenues for collecting the stuff. Now next one is, it's again an important one. Once you're in the end game, don't start True Vault Hunter mod mode immediately. You're better off working through the three levels of Mayhem mode. Each consecutive level beefs up enemy difficulty and real loot drop rates. 
with a couple of difficult repeatable missions to play over and over, it's best way to hit the level cap, farm guardian rank points and find cool legendary guns and gear. So this was the whole article, these were the 11 points that you should know before playing the game Borderlands 3. So if you have any other doubt, if you have any other doubt regarding the game Borderlands 3, please write in the comment section below. And also, if you like this video, please hit the like button below. And also, don't forget to subscribe for more. Thank you and have a nice day.